Okay, <clears throat> as I was saying, on your uh, key tumbler here, there is a little black thing, and this is what uh, you're pressing on when you stick the uh, little. Um, I put an Allen wrench, but you know you can get whatever. I've also I've also used a coat hanger for this. You can kind of see the diameter; it's pretty small there. Um, I used a, co a coat hanger, a metal coat hanger that was pretty strong, and I used that and I pushed that inside um, that hole there. You can barely see it, but anyways, there it is there. So you push that in, and that will push down on this, and then you can get something really sharp, like a really sharp flat screwdriver, or I use this poker thing, uh, but this sits flat all the way inside here, so it's barely going to have anything to stick out for you to grab it. Let me pull that out. Uh, now that I got that out, I should be able to pull this out. Um, there's not anything, there's one screw holding it, but I've already taken it out, so this should be able to come out. It should slide up um, towards me. Probably need two hands to pull it out, so I'm going to have to pause it. Okay, so I had to use two hands to pull it out, but uh, basically it pulls out here and we're good to go. Um, this doesn't have anything coming out of this. Um, I'm guessing the 69 and 70 has a mechanism that pushes a, a little tube out, but um, this is not a locking steering column. I think that may have come on the 69 model. Um, unless I'm mistaken. But uh, this is the key housing. So this one works. Um, I'm going to take this out because I think it's causing problems. It's not letting my... My car's not starting. Um, and to take this out, there's a little tiny screw, super tiny, um, and you need a really f sharp, flat screwdriver. A small screwdriver would work on that. The kind they use for your sunglasses and stuff. So I gotta find one of those and loosen that. Don't lose it. Be careful when you're taking it out. And that'll allow this to come out. All right, so I take the screw out and here it is a little tiny screw and it has a little tiny pin on the end of it and that's what holds uh, that's what holds this in I already took it out of the housing here's the housing <clears throat> this little tiny screw goes right here um, it's a good idea just to put it back in there just finger tight <clears throat> with your <clears throat> finger just so it um. <clears throat> so you don't lose it and that's what holds you can see it inside here that's what holds the uh, wiring harness I guess you could say into the key housing there's a little tiny hole right here and that's where that screw goes to hold it in uh, this is a German ignition housing I'm not sure what's wrong here. The inside of this, the contacts may be worn out or something. Um, and that's why it's not causing my car to start. Uh, so I'm going to replace this and hopefully that will work. Uh, there's this plastic wiring that goes, that covers it. Um, this is our, I've already replaced this. This is from another bus. Um, you can see my wiring job here. Um, <clears throat> so it could be these are loose. That's why my car's not starting. 
but I think it's I think it's okay. So I think one way I could test it is by touching these two together and basically bypassing this to see if that's what the problem is. Um, so I might try that out and see what happens. All right. All right. So I just wanted to show you um, the hack job that I did. Uh, years ago when I first put this on and um, it was working okay and so what I'm doing basically to test the this um, this portion of the of the circuit is bypassing it and basically just touching these two wires together it's almost like jump starting a car and that's my car trying to start um, so it sounds like this could be the problem here um, and that's why my car doesn't want to start all the time. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this and um, hopefully that solves my problem, my starting problem. All right, there you go. All right, folks, so we're back. <clears throat> and um, this is my old switch. I cut the wires off, uh, took it out, and I went to the... VW Parts store here in San Diego. Actually, it's in uh, El Cajon, California, but <clears throat> this is a replacement. <clears throat> you see the original one had three wires, a red one, a red with a black wire, and a black wire, different gauges. This one that I got comes with the red wire. Looks like it's 10 gauge, same as this one, and then a black and red uh, wire that's a little bit that's smaller and then a black one and a gray one so there's one extra one probably this gray one that I'm not going to use um, so actually I take that back <clears throat> it's not extra because I'm looking closer at my switch and it looks like there is a wire that is missing um, it must have broke off and it looks like it was gray so that's probably for accessories or something like that I don't know but maybe that's why my thing wasn't working I don't think so but <clears throat> anyway so <clears throat> turns out now I have an extra gray wire I'm not sure where it goes what, a, what to do with it but I'll just leave it there figure it out later and so now I'm gonna put this back into the housing and then put the housing back into my steering column so I got the new um, wiring harness into the uh, <coughs> housing and there's a little tiny screw right there I used a small screwdriver that didn't work too good so you can use a butter knife. I think I've used that in the past. Uh, this one has a red wire, a black, a red with black and a black, and a gray that you can't see because it's been uh, broken off. But the red one looks like it says Terminal 30. There's a little tiny number here. You can barely see it. But it's the number 30. Um, and I'm guessing that goes to the starter. <clears throat> this new one here uh, is the same thing. It's actually numbered, so that's good. I, I didn't expect it to be numbered, but you can see the number 30 here next to the red wire. So that one's going to go to the key black and red one's going to go to the which is number 50 that's going to go to the uh, windshield wiper switch <clears throat> I'm guessing the gray is for accessory or some kind of light and then 15 which is a black and red That's going to go to the fuse box, I believe. <clears throat> so, 
Luckily, this black wire is pretty long, and uh, here's my my wire coming from the um, from the starter. So, ideally, I should have a connector, kind of like this yellow one. Um, I don't think I have one of those laying around, so. I'm just going to cut this off and um, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this on just in case I ever find one of these I can replace it try to keep it stock and I'm just going to put a connector like this to attach this red wire this new one to this uh, original one Got this connector kit it's, it's pretty cheap but it's gonna have to do the job. And I bought these these tool, this uh, pliers for stripping wire. Um, it's a lot. Hopefully, it works good. It's a lot better than using the the cheap wire strippers that you have to struggle with. So I'll let you know how it works, how good it works. All right, folks. So I did what I should have did in the first place, which was check my. Um, uh, service manual Bentley service manual for 69 can't always trust these diagrams for 1969 because there was different models but for the most part I'm just checking the uh, ignition ignition switch which is D here you can see sorry it's a little out of focus but basically what it says is um, 30 which is a red wire is going to go to the light switch 50 is going to go in its black and red that's going to go to a connector which I don't have <clears throat> so I just uh, made one up myself it's black and red coming out of the ignition the key but it's going to connect to a red wire and that red wire is going to go to the starter. And that's a, f um, I guess this is four millimeters uh, in width, which is 10 gauge in the um, United States. I'm just taking a guess there. I'm not exactly sure, but I think that's true. And this is 2.5 millimeter red wire. So this is a aftermarket one. This is actually 10 gauge, and this black and red one is probably 2.5 millimeters. Um, this is a four probably, and um, the manual, the original one, the German one, <coughs> has. Um, <clears throat> you know uh, looks like 10 gauge and maybe this is a little bit thinner so anyways that's what I got there so this should be connected right connected it here to the windshield wiper switch I'm sorry to this to the uh, to the lights headlight switch and then the other one goes back to the starter which is right here see the black and red going to red really dirty red wire and then the black one this all black one goes to my fuse box which is right here my brand new I think it's West Coast metric fuse box these things tend to break uh, up here these tabs that hold it up to the dashboard tend to break and you never find these with the cover so this is good because it keeps dust and moisture out of that. Keeps your connections nice and uh, clean. So I replaced that not too long ago. These are my blinker. I got to reconnect that. It goes there. It came out when I was um, taking out the, the uh, steering column. Okay, so... Now I gotta put all this back together.